Recently, I've been getting back to basics with some ultra simple, stripped down projects. Two weeks ago, I took advantage of the summer weather by setting up shop in my driveway and turning out a pair of these low Japanese sawhorses. I even kept the tools basic and did almost the whole build with a hatchet, a saw, and a knife. For a bench, I just rolled a log into my workspace and that gave me a platform for chopping and sawing and a place to sit while I carve details with my knife. And that got me to thinking about logs and chopping blocks in historical woodwork shops. I love to use an axe or a hatchet for time-saving waste removal, and that was common practice in 18th and 19th century shops. Country carpenters often kept a big chopping block in the corner of their shop, and they would take work over there to waste away material or split a wide board with the joiner's axe. And that got me to thinking that maybe a chopping block is the perfect addition to the Woodwork for Humans toolkit. And then maybe we could take it a little further. Maybe with some simple modifications and some clever work holding, we could turn that chopping block into a sort of portable small workbench. But wait a second, a workbench made out of a log? That's gotta be crazy, right? This is not a new idea. The green woodwork and bushcraft communities have been using simple chopping block workstations for a long time. We're going to take some of those ideas and optimize them for the hand tool furniture shop. Most of these blocks are on legs, and that's helpful. It gets the block up to a convenient height and lets you get away with a small log instead of some three foot monster you wouldn't be able to move anyway. We're going to make our legs out of cheap construction two by six, and we'll cut it to length using our easy Japanese saw horses that we made a couple weeks ago. If you don't have these yet, they're super fast to put together, and I have some inexpensive plans that you can find down in the description. Once we have all three legs cut, we'll do some shaping to give them a stable angle and a shelf to support the weight of our log. Getting all the measurements and angles correct takes a bit of head scratching, but I've created a drawing with all the information you need. We'll talk more about that later in the video. You can do all the layout with the speed square and a tape measure. And the low Japanese sawhorses make a great little bench for holding your pieces flat and steady while you mark your cut lines. I'm just kneeling on a floor mat and I'm totally comfortable. You'll need to draw one straight line for the layout, but one of your leg blanks makes a good straight edge. We're also going to curve the outside of the leg to cut down on tripping. Go ahead and draw this curve freehand. It's not hard and you really can't get the shape wrong. Next, we'll saw out that big notch. Kneeling on the board helps me get that cross cut started accurately, and then I can stand up and use both hands for faster and more powerful sawing. Rotating the work 90 degrees sets me up for a fast rip cut, and I'm done. To cut that long curve, we'll use the hatchet. For a chopping surface, I've already got the log that I'm using for this project. My piece is about 14 inches wide and 12 inches high. It's just a piece of Siberian elm that I got off the side of the road. It's a lot like oak, but the species doesn't really matter. Just use something hard. If you want to be efficient with your hatchet, make a line of short chops up the wood to weaken the fibers, and then come down with a harder swing to clear away the waste. Notice how my other hand is far away from the strike zone where it can't possibly get hurt. This white pine is soft and very easy to work, especially with a sharp hatchet. It only takes me a few minutes to get my curve roughed out. Once I have the bulk of the waste removed, my carving knife refines that surface into something smooth. Notice that I'm sitting on my log with my workpiece hanging over the side of my lap. If I slip with the knife, there's no way for it to hurt me. I'm concentrating on taking long strokes here so I get the best finish on the wood. It only takes me about an hour to make all three legs. Now I can start thinking about assembly. Chances are, your log is going to be a little bit irregular, just like mine, and you'll have to plan the positions for your legs by eye. I'm trying to space them out so I get the strongest possible tripod shape. Once I find locations that I like, I use a black marker to make heavy marks that I won't miss later on. My log also tapers a lot, which is good because it gives me a really broad surface on top, but I also have to adjust the angle of my legs to account for that shape. It's really easy to just rip off a thin slice from my leg and make the angle exactly what I want. For another one of my legs, I found it faster to just trim the stump to get a flatter face. There's really no wrong way to do this project, so go with your instincts and do what seems right. 
To attach our legs to our log, we're going to use lag screws. These are also called lag bolts, and you might not have heard about them before, but they're worth knowing about. A lag screw is basically a big, super heavy-duty wood screw with a hex head on one side, so you can drive it with a wrench and get a lot more torque. They're not very common in furniture making, but you do see them a lot in outdoor construction, like decks and porches. Now, when you buy these, it's also really important that you get washers to go with them, because that small hex head will dis appear right into the wood as you tighten them. Putting the washer on adds just a little bit of bearing surface underneath that head and keeps it from sinking into the wood. For this project, I got six six-inch lag screws, they're three-eighths in diameter, and six washers to go with them. That whole kit of hardware is only going to cost you a few bucks down at the home center. To install our lag bolts, we do have to drill our legs, and that can be tricky without a good vise. A good workaround is to squeeze the work between your legs and prop it up on a sawhorse so you can easily see what you're doing. You can see that I have my drilling angle penciled in on the side of my leg, and I periodically check that angle and adjust the way I'm drilling. Of course, feel free to use an electric drill if you don't have the old-fashioned bit brace that I'm using. Once your legs are drilled, you can drop your lag bolts into the holes, Place the leg on the log and whack the ends with a piece of scrap. The points of those bolts will leave nice, clear dents in the wood and tell you exactly where to drill. You might be afraid of hand drilling into a big log, but green wood works really easily, and you'd be surprised how quickly the work goes. You can drive your bolts with a cheap, adjustable wrench if you're on a budget. It gets the job done, but it's a little bit clumsy. An even better option is a socket wrench. Even if you mostly do woodwork, you really need to invest in a wrench and a set of sockets. It's just an indispensable tool, and this Crescent brand wrench I'm using only costs 13 bucks, which is kind of a steal. I will link to it down in the description. Another good tip for driving these bolts is to dip the ends in paste wax. It won't weaken the hold at all, but the bolts will drive more easily and they won't snap if you get carried away while you're tightening them. When you stand your block up for the first time, it might feel really wobbly. Don't worry, we're going to adjust that right now. First problem, your legs are guaranteed to not be sitting flush with the floor. Glue a pencil to a little piece of scrap wood and use it to scribe the floor line onto your legs. Once you cross cut those lines, your legs will be level to the floor. Unfortunately, my block is still really wobbly. My log is just an irregular shape and I need to move one of the legs to get it stable. Once that's done, my block is nice and sturdy and I can get to using it right away. I restored this little hewing hatchet a few weeks ago, and you can check out that video if you want to see how to make custom handles for your tools. Combined with a good chopping block, a hatchet is a really efficient way to waste away material. This block gives me a tough surface, and it's lower than my joiner's bench, so it's easier on the arms and shoulders. So with the block the way it is, it's already really useful. It's sturdy, it's at a convenient height, and it's got a tough broad surface. But while I was using it, I kept thinking that if we just had a little bit of work holding, we could transform this thing into like a complete little bench. And I was thinking a lot about my holdfasts. You see me use these in a lot of videos, and they let you hold things down really solidly to pretty much any surface. These would be difficult to use in a log-style bench, and you might not have them, you might not be able to afford them right now. But I've got a great idea. We're just going to adapt an inexpensive F-clamp to do basically the same job as a holdfast and make our chopping block way more useful. The idea here is simple. We're going to brace our block against something steady and then drill a series of holes up one side. I'm starting with a big one-inch hole that's going to hold the bottom jaw of my clamp. Then I'll follow up with a line of smaller holes. I can use my hatchet, like a chisel, to connect those holes and cut out the waste. At this point, don't expect your clamp to just slide in. You're going to need to do some more drilling and be creative with the angles to hollow out the right space. Be patient. After a bit of work, I got a tight friction fit and my clamp is sitting straight up and down. Using this style of clamp lets me adjust for almost any size work and it gives me a surprisingly tight hold when I clamp it down. I can use this piece, and it's solid enough to chisel a mortise, just like I would in my usual workbench. For small pieces, this chopping block makes a great bench. I can also handle sawing with either my western or my Japanese saws. It's not as good as using a bench or a pair of horses, but I can make one or two cuts in the middle of a project without switching to a different setup. Now, this single clamp hold down that we've just installed, it works really well. But anytime you're holding a piece of stock at only one point, it might rotate, especially if you're trying to work at an angle or work on the edge of something. Luckily, that's an easy fix. 
I'm just going to go about four inches to the right of my clamp and drill a hole straight down into the surface of my block. Then I'll stick in a piece of hardwood dowel and saw it off an inch or two above the surface. If you use this setup a lot, you might need a couple pegs of different lengths, but one will get you started. When you combine the clamp with a peg, you can hold even large pieces of wood very solidly. If you want to work on the edge of a piece, that sideways motion is going to make it want to rotate. But with the clamp holding it down and the peg keeping it from sliding, I have a surprisingly tight grip and I can work confidently in any direction. At this point, I'm really starting to see the potential in a simple chopping block workbench. Of course, it's good for hatchet work and you could use it for small projects like spoon carving, but I think we could take it even further. I think we could use this chopping block bench to make an entire piece of simple furniture. Of course, if we're going to do that, we also need some way to work on the ends of pieces. So like if I wanted to make a simple chair and I had to carve a tenon in the end of a piece of wood, I'd have to hold it upright and have good access to the end. Now I think I can do that with this bench and all I need to add is a simple screw clamp. These wide 2x6 legs give me a broad clamping surface and the screw clamp lets me hold even narrow parts straight up and down. With this setup, I can clamp a long piece like a chair leg at any height that's convenient. Then it's easy to carve a tenon on the end. Even though I'm hitting straight down, the screw clamp provides a lot of grip and the piece hardly moves. This setup isn't quite as good as a traditional vise, but it's not bad either. The piece is up where I can see it and it's held firm. If I want to get closer to the work for details or final pairing, I just sit right on the block. It's more than strong enough to support my weight and lets me get right in there to do the last few cuts. Now obviously, this chopping block is perfect for basic hatchet work. If you're trimming a piece of stock or splitting a board, this is a great surface and it's going to keep you from messing up the top of your workbench. But maybe you don't have a workbench at all. Maybe this thing needs to be your workbench. Well, if you're working in a small space or working outside, I think this chopping block could be enough of a bench to get you started in the craft. I think you could make whole pieces of furniture using this chopping block as your only work surface. Of course, that's a bold claim, and if I'm going to say it, I'm going to have to put it to the test. So I'm going to. I'm going to take this block out into my backyard with four or five basic tools and make a complete project. Now, I can't do it next week because I'm already making a detailed video about this super premium Lee Nielsen hand plane. One of my viewers bought this thing, threw down big money on it, and couldn't get it to cut. So he boxed it up and sent it to me, and I've got a deep dive into all the details of this plane, how to tune it up, adjust it, and get everything that you want out of a really expensive tool like this. So that's next week, but two weeks from now, I'll be out in my yard on the chopping block making a complete piece of furniture. Now in the meantime, you might want to get your own chopping block bench together. It's a quick project. The only part that's difficult is figuring out all the angles and cuts on the legs, but luckily I've created a measured drawing that has all the details you need, all the angles, and takes all the guesswork out. And I'm going to make that available for free. Just go to rexkruger.com store and you can download it. And I've got a bunch of other free plans on my store. I've even got a complete set of free plans for my joiner's workbench. So go over to the store and grab all the free plans you want. But I should also mention that plan sales are one of the things that keep this channel running. So while you're there, you might want to pick up one of my dozens of super affordable plans. Most of them are five bucks or under, and they keep things running around here. Of course, the other thing that keeps things running around here is my patrons on Patreon. They provide the support, the encouragement, the feedback, and the community that keeps me going week after week. If you'd like to be part of that amazing community of craftspeople, go on over to patreon.com slash Rex Kruger and check out the early access, rewards, discussion forum, and articles that I have only for my patrons. I will see you here next week for my Lee Nielsen plane review and in two weeks for ultra basic furniture making on the chopping block. I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching.